What was that, Ryder? What'd you say? Huh? What'd you say? Did you say there's only three days left for the 322 Threads giveaway number two? Is that what you said? I'm pretty sure that's what she said because that is the case, guys. Three days. This giveaway ends August 31st. Today's the 28th, so that is three days away. You can win a brand new KLX 110, as you see here, or two grand in cash. Yes, again, two grand in cash. You guys have probably heard me say it a million times, but I'm just here to let you guys know that we are getting down to the nitty gritty here. There's only a couple days left. So go over to 322threads.com and get your orders in to get entered to win that bike or two grand cash. All you have to do is buy anything off the website. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be this t-shirt. It could be that flag. It could be anything. Go on there, get your orders in. Every $1 you spend right now gets you 50 entries to win. So it is like super duper duper multiplier right now. Get on in there, get those orders in. We appreciate the support. And now to this really, really, really good video that I'm thinking it's gonna really open the eyes of many. So enjoy guys. <music> back i am still up here at Southside sales and service and we are doing another big topic uh kind of tech tip video for you guys uh it's kind of been our theme lately is just uh getting as much knowledge out to you guys which is always our ultimate goal constantly but sometimes we do it more than all you know more than other times behind us we have an assault which is one of the most popular models going oh yeah uh for a bunch of years now they're great. The guys that, you know, ride them on the trail, they love them. But there is one thing, and I constantly, constantly, constantly see it, and Bruce constantly hears it from guys that call in about shock work, and it's my rear suspension feels very stiff. It feels very rigid. I get a lot of feedback in the little bumps. And what a lot of guys, and again, what we see is they go directly to springs, directly to springs. I, someone just reached out to me, which is kind of why it's in my head about this. And Bruce can kind of tell you otherwise. Yeah, what, what we got is, you know, this snowmobile is made for crossover. So when they built this sled, they built the, the shock valving to make it so that it will want to climb up on top of the snow and not move the, the rear suspension so much because obviously on the other stuff we're doing <clears throat> we're concentrating on <clears throat> that first movement being uh, easy so when you're going down and there's a stutter bumps or a small chop we want the suspension to move under us and not us to move and then when we come into something big we anti bottom so with this suspension they literally make the shocks kind of the opposite they make it so that that first movement is harsh and then the rest of it isn't. Why would they do that? Well, let me tell you. They, <laughs> uh, <laughs> figuring that somebody's gonna use this in off trail, if, <clears throat> if you take a regular sled in off trail and it's powder, the suspension, even though it's just fluffy snow, the suspension is moving into the sled. It's moving, it's moving up into the tunnel and it's moving in and it's moving out like that. Well, obviously if you wanna trench you don't want to get stuck that's not what you want you want where the suspension is hanging out and digging a trench as much as you can so that you can get out of your problem so what they do with the shock is they make the the valving so that it won't move unless it gets hit basically so if you're climbing trying to climb up on top of snow or you're in deep snow that suspension is just staying out it's it's staying out because that's what it thinks you want as soon as you get on a trail and you're going down the trail, now you do want the suspension to move. You, you see that chop coming and you want the suspension to be moving underneath you, moving up into the chassis, and it doesn't. It, it's gonna lift you and move, and lift you and then move. It's gonna stay very Rather rigid. than it moving and not lifting you off the seat. And in, you know, the valving thing that we constantly are talking about you know, it's a big thing. I don't care if it's a, a race car or a snowmobile, it's a big thing. So, and this kind of proves the point because these shocks are basically the same shocks that we use on an XCR or a VR1 as far as how the internals work. But yet, it works the opposite of what we're doing. So, 
if somebody is using this sled for 80% off trail, 20% on trail, okay, well, this is what you want. You, you wanted to do it. And then, you know, we were, Jesse was talking about springs on the same kind of thing that we have on the Indies, where we have that torsion spring. The, this spring isn't much bigger, or isn't any bigger, than on an Indy. So, and they're not interchangeable, so let's just clarify that. Right, because we're this, talking about actual spring rate. Right, we're talking about the, the, the thickness of the wire, which on this is like 359, and on an Indy, it's 359. When we bump up to those HD springs or XHDs, it's 375. So you're, you're only gaining like 15, 16 thousandths of thickness, but obviously it, it makes a difference. It goes, on an Indy, it goes from 11 pounds per degree of movement to 13 pounds per degree of movement. So it's not the spring that is the problem. I mean, obviously this suspension, first of all, also works differently than an Indy. An Indy has the crossbar that goes between when the front, we went through this with the video before, if you look back, if you haven't seen it, we had it right on the table. When you push on this, like, you know, you're coming into the bump and it moves this, this hits a bar and then it starts to move this, where this does not do that. This will move through here and move very little bit of this spring. So big, big difference of that. So the, uh, so with that being said, an indie per se would be a stiffer feel per spring because it's using both springs the front track and the rear at the same time so again this is really getting all that harsh ride out of the shocks so i did a fair amount of work last year with guys that did want to sell on trail because they like the length and and that's what they want to do and um so we even put some xcr stuff in it because the lengths are the same and and found you know some pretty good information as far as putting the same valving that i have in an indy in this and what does it do not only in compression but in rebound and definitely is a difference you know no question it, it immediately got the wheels spinning and started chasing that to make it better and so we, we do have that and it is better and we can dial that in for you uh spring wise is still the you know the main thing with that is how heavy is the rider doesn't change from an indy to an assault that is what is holding the snowmobile up. If you put too much spring there, no matter what you do, the shocks, it's gonna feel harsh because it's not gonna move enough for you. So, um, so again, that spring is to hold the snowmobile up and that is holding you and it up. So that is what you have to remember. After that, it is a, a lot of the ride is the shock performance right. taking care of that. Yeah, ride quality really comes down to shock, yeah. valving, shock settings. Yeah. You know, your harshness, again, unless it's very, very oversprung. Right. You're yeah. going to, you know, your harshness, if you guys call me, oh, it's very harsh. You know, a lot of that's going to be in shocks, which, again, testament, we did it, you know, Bruce had a couple guys on this last year. Yeah. And that's where the harshness of these come from. Yeah, and, and then what will happen, too, is the guy that is going down the trail hard, um, it's not valve stiff on high speed. So it'll once the shock moves it'll blow right through it so it's literally the opposite of what we're trying to do on an indie um you know they do that on this because they're figuring i don't want it to move for the deep snow but uh, the guy going down the trail on this isn't like hammer and he's not super aggressive so they don't have the velvet very stiff so that's kind of the the trade-off there whereas out oh, here we seem to have everybody that wants to go fast and be aggressive and not be off trail so much so it's completely the opposite right. and that's why again i mean i've talked to probably 15 guys just last year about this exact thing and mm -hmm. they've been told by others to go to the light duty spring and that'll help but really the root of the, the yeah. issue is is the valving because it's not then, the spring then what happens you put the light spring on this and you're 175, 200 pounds. Uh, you get on the gas, all the traction this thing's got. Now it's gonna squat mm -hmm. because just from it can't momentum, hold it's not gonna hold you up. It's gonna squat, you go through a turn, you get on the gas, it squats, it doesn't turn good. So you you make that change and then you affect everything. Everything else. Yeah, you know, because this sled already has a lot of track right here. So besides a lot of track on the ground, 
So, you know, a lot of the guys that we're doing this to that want to ride it on a trail, want to go around a corner, is, you know, we're doing the old faithful there. We're pulling the strap a little bit, and then we're doing the shocks to make them low speed good, high speed good, and then and springing it, to, you know, towards the, the weight the of the rider. rider. And then dealing with, you know, this sled already comes with 100 pound springs here, just like an XCR. And these are two inch shocks on this because it's, an, it's similar to an XCR, but with a single single knob. Um, so, and these aren't super soft either. I mean, these are, you know, fairly on the stiff side. So again, we, we turn those springs all the way down. We get the nose up a little bit. We pull the strap up and then it starts to turn. Mm -hmm. And again, it goes through the bumps. Yeah. and. Uh... This guy's gonna be on one all year, so. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bruce is thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, I mean we're gonna. Yeah, it'll be all for the good. Yeah, it'll be all for the good. It'll be all for you guys. Honestly, it's gonna be, hey, try this this weekend and let me know how it does. So when you guys call up, you know we have a laundry list of stuff that. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna that is gonna be really good. Yeah, it'll be it'll be great, and I am excited. You know, I mean we have the other sleds pretty much unlocked, and this is for us. I mean, yes, we have a lot of knowledge to it, but we're still learning, you know, a little bit as we go. So it'll be, yeah. it'll be good. Yeah. But at the end of the day, guys, your your rigid assault rear end is from valving, yep. not springs. Yeah. And that is the gist of this video. Um, I wanted to get Bruce on here and really dive into this. We've touched on this a little bit in prior videos, but we never really kind of went into this kind of depth on it. So, yep. but that is the case, guys. If you're feeling this and you kind of want to get something changed, Give Southside Sales and Service a call, ask for Bruce, um, get your shocks sent in. If you're in the area, you could bring your whole sled in. Uh, you get it serviced and shocks and everything done here all at once. Um, but he could get it set up and riding the right way for your riding style and your weight. But uh, yep. that's gonna do it, right? Yep. It's gonna do it, guys. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.